Yeah. Oh, yeah. Are the two uh, video? Uh, what you got going on there? It's a great question. Okay. <laughs> Just cut. Okay. <laughs> Tricky. Jesus. So in the uh, video that we're seeing from Atalanta, the top side view of Hercules, you can see quite a bit of yeah. marine snow. So yeah. all of those teeny tiny little white like particles that you see floating around, uh, we call that marine snow. Essentially, it's just little bits and pieces of organic matter. So uh, maybe some fish scales in there, um, some leftover decomposing matter, maybe some Sorry. fecal matter in there from some of the organisms and fish. So um, you'll oftentimes see a lot of marine snow, especially when we're doing these deeper dives. So in case anybody was wondering what that was. A lot of bacteria too. Bacteria. Bacteria. And plankton. Degrading down, yeah. Yeah. All These that good particles stuff. sometimes take years to fall, you know, to the bottom of the seafloor. And so all those microbes are breaking down all of that nice juicy carbon over years and years. I have a question for you. So for marine snow, does it only need to be dead things or can it be like just tiny plankton that is alive but it's just it's just kind of floating around uh, still working on it um so it, it, uh, it, it can be live things but most of the live things are probably microbial or single cell right. um you know protist type organisms um you know, foraminiferans maybe so or even fungi one group we don't talk about often enough fungi are yeah. responsible for degrading a lot of organic material yeah, I forget fungi exists in water, too. <laughs> it's not just a land yeah. thing. Just, just not mushrooms. Yeah. Except they're mushroom corals. But yeah, fungi are in the sediments. They're single-celled. And they're responsible for keeping the carbon out of the atmosphere in the sediments, sequestered. Right. Well, um... Super Which important. I one more time, just really quickly. So again, um, anybody who's viewing online, welcome. We are uh, in the middle of, or I should say, uh, yeah, we're on a we're on a dive, a small unnamed uh, seamount north of Johnston Atoll. We should be down here for a few more hours. If you have questions or comments that you would like to share with us, feel free to do so in the chat box that you see under the live, the live uh, video. We'd be happy to hear from you, happy to answer any questions. And I don't think I've introduced myself this whole entire time I've been sitting here. My name is Brittany. <laughs> I'm a science oh, no. communication fellow. A rock fellow. I believe. <laughs> we also have nice. geologists, biologists, ROV pilots, navigators, all here in the control room. So if you have any questions for anybody, let us know. Okay. We got there in the end. 
I'll just try and shove a little. Nice. Nice. <laughs> That's great. Sorry that took so long. <laughs> When the handle was wiggling around in there, it, you know how the handle was wiggling around earlier? It can't be pushed in, right? It was just a lateral wiggle. I could try to shove it in. I'm very concerned about the coral in the box. Um, that particular coral has escaped before. Um, so I, I'm fine if you want to leave it like that for now, but maybe maybe they can retool it uh, and replace it before we recover uh, to make sure that box seals before on the ascent. Do you want to just take care of that now? or it, It's up to you. I, I leave it up to your uh, judgment. Uh, but I would probably move it to the starboard outboard aft compartment because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty okay. sure that coral is going to escape. Uh, what is it in recovery. just now? Is it in the starboard center aft? The stuff that's hanging out just now? Or, sorry, what are you talking about? The, oh no, no, I'm just saying it doesn't have to be done right now, but before we recover uh, and are off bottom, it would be recommended to take the scoop out and put it in the starboard box so that we can make sure we have a good seal on that forward toolbox because that coral will fall out of that box uh, on recovery. Um, yeah. Yeah, is it gonna, is the scoop gonna fit in the starboard box? Yes. Yeah, Dan used to put it back there. It used to fit perfectly. Okay. So, Uh, so we, we, there is a coral in there. You see, you can see it sticking out of the box, but we can just throw it on top of there, and it actually might help that coral sit better in that in that aft compartment of the box. Sorry, Steve. I didn't know that that was an established place for it. Uh, it, it. There, there really isn't, but um, yeah, yeah. There really isn't. Yeah, there's there's no establishment for anything. It's wherever it fits. But I've never seen the scoop put in the forward box before. Um, but that doesn't mean it doesn't fit. It's a it's a new scoop too, yeah. Yeah, no, here, yeah, on top of that. Yeah, <laughs> nicely packaged. So as we're re relocating those nuggets, somebody was asking how deep Hercules can go, what is the max depth? So Hercules can get to uh, 4,000 meters deep, that's about 13,000 feet. Um, again, currently we are just under 2,000 meters um, on the side of the seamount, so just to give you a reference. Was there a different camera that we had last time, or? Yeah. That's right. Oh, nice, thanks. We Starboard, aft. Yep, yeah, outboard. right on top of that coral where it's sticking out. It'll help keep it inside. Okay. Which camera did you just fire, Gabby? 
Nice. Oh. Beautiful. No, it's it's okay. It's a, it's a new scoop, new uh, you know, new 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 up, new um, you know, new new trigonometry uh, geometry for everyone. It's okay if there's a branch that sticks out of the coral okay. um, from the box, but we just want to make sure if we open it again, it's not going to totally somersault out of there. <laughs> Nugget secured. Uh, I don't know if that crawls. Yeah, I don't know about the coral though. Mm -hmm. I do. Okay. Nice. <laughs> we'll put a note in our log too that if we open the starboard box on the next watch that uh, make sure that keep an eye on that uh, so it doesn't fall out. It's not floaty, it's just it's awkward. If it becomes a real problem, we can just cut it in half and then just rearrange it in the box before we recover. Lovely. Let's move on. Um, upslope. Ready? Let's do it. Bridge, huh? I'm ready. I'm always ready. Uh, five zero meters, two six zero. Looks like the sun be rising. Oh yeah, nice uh, wire cam sunrise. Mm. Oh, that's a nice oh. pirate talk, Logan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the sun viewers. be rising. That is a beautiful sunrise. Yeah. There you go. Wow. have some young guests who are wondering, has Hercules found any sunken treasures deep in the ocean? <laughs> That's a loaded question. All of our collections are treasures. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that a fishy? Yeah, that's a, uh, that's called a Sinaphobranchid eel or cutthroat eel. Nice. Yeah, sure, a quick zoom. Can, oh, quick snap Sorry. in. Uh, why do they call it cutthroat? Uh, I'm not 100% certain, but I'm pretty sure it's because of the way that the gill, the gill covers are arranged on the body. It does this maneuver where it, okay, it flares its gill uh, plates and uh, looks like it's, you know, throat is cut. They, they do this weird thing where they kind of like, it looks like they're coughing or sneezing. Uh, I don't know if anyone's ever seen that behavior, but they kind of like shake their shake their heads and flare their gills, mm. probably to clear, you know, maybe some parasites or something. Um, but they often uh, have a bunch of scars on them too. That one has a few patches where it was missing some scales. Oh, another one. Nice. Um, so possibly, yeah, possibly running away from a fight or getting into a fight. Yep, I think that's also a Sanafa Uh Go for Zoom. And that's a different one, right? I'm pretty sure that's another individual, yeah. 
Seems to have less scarring. Yep. Okay, go in. Thank you. Oh, oh it just did that behavior. Yeah, oh. where it just shakes its head. Yeah. yeah. Perfect demonstration. <laughs> I think they get upset like when the vehicle does various things. Mm. <clears throat> See, I'm not making all this up. I actually... <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> remains to be seen, but... <laughs> uh. Science, I've been wondering for a while, what's in jar two? Uh, it's a sponge. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, it was collected on the 12 to 4. Oh, it's doing the thing again. It looked again. like a pile of rocks. Yeah, so that's I why like, I was how confused. Did, how do you suction that? I think it's a manganese-coated sponge. Oh, oh no kidding. So, dead and old? Dead and old, <laughs> so yeah. Okay. Old, right? This is second-hand information, so we'll see. Okay. We'll see what it looks like when we get it up on deck. How much more is left in this move? Uh, 20 meters. Cool. We can add another one in if we'd like. Um, is this our last? Is the next one will be our last uh, flat-ish. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we've got... Yeah, another move and we'll Go be at the zoom. steep. So if you're okay with that, I'll add another move now. Yeah, sure. Cool. Bridge nav. <coughs> we yep. can add five zero meters to so two yep. six zero. Fam uh, family Friday. F A R R E I D A E. It's probably got some associates in there. These things are often loaded with uh, sometimes squat lobsters, but also brittle stars. So you can see a small pink dot. That's probably one of those, uh, but it's on the other side. <coughs> yeah, so Gabby, the. Um the ship starts to slow down near the last like 10 meters of a move. Okay. So if I can put it in, if I can add before that, we don't lose the momentum of the ship. Gotcha. Or the DP like powering down and then powering mm -hmm. back up. I've had this on rock lobster stuck in my head. Oh, for man. The past four hours, by the way. <laughs> mm. Oh, my gosh. That was like the first thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be there the whole month, oh. I have a feeling. Well, now I just joined you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the club. <laughs> We're in this together. <laughs> Solidarity. <laughs> Supposed to be kind to your shipmates, not bringing them <laughs> into your troubles. <laughs> Misery loves company. <laughs> there are worse songs to have stuck in your head. All right, so we've got a sponge there, indeterminate, but. Uh, oh, you can uh, go a little bit wider than that. Go. It's tough to. It's really. Oh, that's a stocked crinoid. There yeah, that's go. what yeah. I was going for. Oh yeah, Cute. let's see. Yeah. There's a couple different families of these. It, it's uh, it's not easy to tell them apart. You can go um, a little tighter now. Yes. And proper identification of this would probably require a, a, a sampling event. But what? Did you say a it's sampling a, event? A, a sampling <laughs> event. It's like a yeah. predation <laughs> event only. Um, it's us. It's a <laughs> stock, stocked crinoid. Yeah. Okay, so that's uh, let's see where a kind of dermata. Phylum. Mm -hmm. A bathycrinidae family, probably. Sea lilies, yeah. Oh, uh, there's your waypoint. Right here. Oh, awesome. Yes. Oh, finally Down got one. one. Down, up one. This one. The first one. The first B one. Yeah. So somebody was asking, when is the next watch change? Yeah, so currently this is the four to eight crew. Um, we are going to be switching out at eight o'clock Hawaiian Standard Time. 
That's when you're gonna get the eight to 12 crew. I do believe that this dive will be concluding. Hey, I'll be with 15 of them, so uh, uh, let's come up. I think around 11 o'clock. I don't quote me on that, but I don't want to get the we have a few more <laughs> hours left of this dive. But um, this crew that we're talking, that you're talking to right now, or that you're listening to right now, um, we are going to be switching out here in about half an hour. Yeah. Yeah. The latest is we'll be off bottom, off the sea floor by 11, and then recovering on deck by noon. All right. Steve, do you know what the contour intervals on the topo profiles are? Yeah, they are 10 meters. Right. I think, yeah, I'm pretty sure they're 10 meters on the high pack. On the dive plan, they're 100 meters. Okay. I can verify that brief in a second here. <laughs> At least I hope they're not 100 meters there. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to be holding on tight for a few minutes. They're 10 meters. The um, the slightly darker lines are 100 meters. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. We've got 25 meters left to this move, and then we'll be at waypoint uh, just before waypoint five. Steve, do we need to hit the waypoint, or we can just be near it? No, you can. Great. Yeah, lazy, lazy turn. Okay, then our next move will be upslope, not the steeper slope. Yep. Cool. This is interesting. I wasn't expecting to see sediment like this up a slope. Are we going sideways? No. Uh, yeah. It is interesting the ripples, uh, how the ripples are so prominent on this slope. Yeah. Yeah. What is this? Uh, yeah, you are. Anyone see yeah. this fish? Yeah. It's a tadpole. That's a. Cascale. Uh, <laughs> A uh, little critter. Interesting. What did you say, Samantha? Cuskiel. They're all cuskiels. Uh, cuskiel. I think that's, um, I think it is a cuskiel. No, maybe not. Maybe Basilzetus, but. Every time I throw out a fish name, it's always wrong, so I'm not going to guess anymore. <laughs> Aw. <laughs> <laughs> can't be all kinds of biologists at once. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can. I believe in you. Uh, yeah, this is odd. You're going up, sort of upslope, but there's the, uh, so so the ripples are up, too. Also, the current is basically gone. Like, I huh. can keep a zoom now, right? Like yeah, that's weird. The Just vehicle's goes. handling beautifully right now. Huh. So did you say those uh, ripples are going parallel with the slope? Um, they yeah, seem Basso to... Yeah, So I'm facing upslope, basically. Interesting. Oh. Yeah. There's a good picture of it here. Uh, I'll pull it up in a second. Yeah, if you have high pack visible, the longer, here, let me get my cursor here. Here. just thought I would sh do a little sediment sample there. Yeah, these two circle um, symbols, the one with the longer um, line is Hercules, and that longer line is the, the forward part of the vehicle. So you can get a direction for Hercules and Argus when you're, or Atalanta when you're looking at high pack. Yep, looks right. Good. Dome, dome shaped head, long skinny tail, Basazetus. Hmm. Ophidiidae family. It's very cute. Oh, it's very cute. Okay, so that move is done. Um, I'd like to get 
The vehicle's out a little farther before we make that move. Sure thing. West. Just let it swing. This is like the pre, this next move is the slope move, hey? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. And we'll be doing, I don't know, let's say 280. Would it be possible to square up the Zeus and get the Minip out of the shot? Yep, absolutely. Okay. Um, do you care whether the stereo cams are in the shot or not? I think that's fine, yeah. Okay. Uh, Karen, can you uh, shoulder azimuth left on the radar? Yeah. Is that in the, the page of hydraulics? Yeah, it's in, uh, yeah, for hydraulics at the bottom. There you oh. go. Okay, so shoulder left. That's a little slow. Yeah. So somebody would like to know what are some of the goals and reasons for mapping the ocean floor, specifically Johnston Atoll. Can I reset the DVL too while we're here? Yeah, go for cool. it. If you've got some good, some good hits. So currently we are doing an ROV dive. This area has been mapped previously. Um, this is a little different than mapping, but specifically why Johnston Atoll? That's an excellent question. I'm gonna pass it over to Steve. Yeah, so this, this area around Johnston has been um, prioritized as an area for exploration in part because uh, Good to go. While there have been some ROV dives done, a lot of this area remains unexplored. Uh, particularly up in the northwest corner of this area, there's been very few dives done on seamounts that are still um, okay. unmapped. And mapping is kind of a precursor for our operations, although it doesn't always have to be, but we usually rarely will dive on a on a seamount we haven't before mapped because it allows us to more precisely plan our approach. And can you approach. bring Atalanta heading to 260? Yeah. We're doing 280. Oh, 280? I'm yeah. sorry. You're good. You're good. Uh, throughout this ex expedition, we'll be doing dives um, both here and then also perhaps in the southwest corner in areas where we have previously mapped in, in other years and um, going back to, to ROV dive. Sometimes we're not always capable of doing map and dive on the same feature, so we have to take advantage of the time that we're given to map and then maybe in subsequent days or weeks or years we'll come back and, and dive those sites or other ships might as well. For example, some of the multi-beam bathymetry that we're using to plan this dive was collected on um, previous expeditions by NOAA ship Okeanos Explorer um, as well as uh, I believe not on this particular site, but the RV Falcor, uh, Falcor 1 also dove here, or Falcor Classic as, as it's called. <laughs> um, so, and then uh, there have also been other university um, ships that have worked in this area in the past. So all of this, all of these mapping data are publicly accessible. So we will often aggregate all of these data and overlay them and use them to plan where we want to map, uh, what dive targets we want to we want to dive on. You know, we are out here with an ROV, and that's our primary goal is to spend time on the seafloor. But if, for example, the mission requires us to map a site before we dive it, or the weather doesn't permit dive ops, then we will do something like uh, map uh, a site for a future day. I'd also like to add to that another reason to, uh, to map and explore these areas is uh, these ocean basins are some of the uh, 
the last explored areas on Earth, uh, and just for the sense of discovery and exploration, uh, to better understand our planet and uh, the life uh, that the planet supports. That was beautiful, Nick. Thank you. <laughs> and find cool rocks, right? And find cool rocks. And find cool rocks. There's plenty of cool rocks. If we didn't map, <laughs> we couldn't find the rocks. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We wouldn't know they were there. <laughs> Mapping is <laughs> integral to its finding rocks. Another bamboo coral. There's there's a few different types of yep, we can do a quick zoom. There's a few different types of corals here. Most of the ones I've been seeing since we started up slope have been like in the lower right hand corner of this Chrysogorgia colony. But we also have bamboo corals like the one dead ahead. Uh, that we're zooming in on now. There's also a few of these um, unbranched black corals. That one to the left hand side is a black coral. I'm going to add another move. We're okay. almost done with this one. A lot of particles in suspension okay. as well. Uh, go wide. Yep. We We've add another seen three some metallogorgia as zero. well here and some unbranched bamboo corals, which may be different species from the ones that we've, um, uh, different species than the one we just saw, which was branched. Should I bring up the winch? It's, that? it's often the, the small the corals that yeah, yeah. perplex okay, us right. the most because we're not sure if they're just diminutive corals or if they are actually uh, you know, just uh, juveniles of larger morphs, you don't need to come up too much larger more. species. Okay. I came up off the bottom. Okay. The problem, <laughs> the problem I run into. Oh, right. <laughs> so uh, somebody is curious about how often are new oceanic rocks being discovered? Well, technically, all these rocks are new since they've never been uh, Ooh, viewed before. Bars. Uh, rock <laughs> types, um, I wouldn't say there are too many uh, to be found, but um, those that you are found are probably uh, a lot rarer than, than what you're seeing right now. Um, again, based off of uh, composition mostly and, and uh, other eruptive properties. What would you say is the rarest rock in the world? I would say a meteorite is probably the rarest <laughs> rock. That is a dead ferraid sponge. Okay, go uh, wide. It actually might not be the case, though. There are uh, uh, incredibly rare rocks that are uh, that were made uh, early in Earth's history mm -hmm. uh, when. It was essentially a, uh, a giant uh, ball of magma, and some of those rocks are still uh, still found um, here and there occasionally. Um, very low silica rocks um, in certain eruptive settings um, are also very rare. Uh, I think the rarest rock I've ever held was probably a little piece of space rock from the Apollo mission, uh, and that was definitely a cool event that I got to experience. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So what do you think we have here? Pillow pillow flows? Pillow basalts? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Oh. Yeah. Yep. We should uh, grab one before we get up to higher elevation. Uh, or it might well, just be in carbon. We, we have 15 minutes left in the watch. Let's let's try and time that. Maybe we can do it closer to the watch change so that right. we can leave them in a good place. How does that sound, front row? 
Can we plan our moves such that we maybe settle out during the watch change or close to it? Sounds so like the next uh, watch picks up the rock? Or you want us to pick up the rock? I don't know. What, what do you, you feel? You're feeling punchy? You want to do it before them? or? Yeah, I think we can pick up the rock now. I think this is just enough time to do so. All right. We'll, we'll claim that, that last rock prize. Let's poke. Okay. So oh, yeah. whenever you settle out, bridge now. We're not expecting very many uh, rocks past uh, 1,800 meters, right? Well, I, I, I mean, I, I would well, say leave ones. leave capacity just in case. Um, sure. But yeah, I was I would say right here. Uh, how does it does this look good to you? Uh, Anything angular that strikes your fancy? I see nothing popping out at me, but so we can. Um, where are we at with the ship? Ship stopped. Okay. So we'll get some swing. Can you come up? But we've got space to have that swing happen. We haven't anything open. Yeah, so we're probably going to go there, yeah. Okay. Science, what do you see? Um, just looking for something that's uh, loose. Hopefully angular. Mm -hmm. Is that, that it's a possibility. It could be too flat though. Yeah. Up here. Mm -hmm. Oh, you like that? Or maybe this if we're up. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Either one. Not that rock, not today. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think the upper one's probably attached. Okay. So I'll try this lower one. You wanna circle it for me again? It's a good size. Looks like it might be attached, but it might not be. Yeah, I'll poke it. This is following the tradition of all geologists who want to pick up a rock right before the watch change. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be attached. <laughs> it's not just before the watch change. We want to pick up all the rocks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's usually just before the watch change. Adam, oh, uh, I have a Adam Sewell uh, has a tendency to do it. He'll he'll wait. It, it's not a bad idea. It's a really good idea, actually. What's that? Uh, sampling at a watch change because everyone's settled out and it's true when it's a quick pickup but when it's not <laughs> then you're i uh i found some biology i'd like to zoom on here afterwards too so if okay. if we can not go too far after we test here i think our uh, atalanta is starting to settle out so i think we've Excellent. got some space Me, uh, can you, you circle point? it again? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Thanks. Oh, looks a lot bigger now. Yeah. Yeah, it might be too big. Mm, That's nope. attached. That's all right. Go ahead. Well, uh, yeah. Um, anything any, behind the claw? And a poke here. Yeah, that's what I was. Oh, right there. It's pretty botryoidal. What does that mean? Say that one again. <laughs> Bubbly. Yes. Nope. Yeah. How about to the right there? A little rock in the sediment. Oh yeah. Is that angular enough? This one? Is it? Uh, yeah. Might not be big enough. Oh, what? <laughs> okay, Goldilocks. <laughs> <laughs> nope, attached. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm very curious. There's a structure here I want to zoom on when you okay. have a chance. Uh, um, any other rocks you want to poke first? Can I pick up? Um, or move? If you want to get a rock, that one might be just loose. Okay. But it may not be the right rock. Um, that's up to, I guess, the geologist? Yeah, yeah, yeah let's go for it. He wants all the rocks. <laughs> <laughs> I can't have enough. How would you describe this one? Uh, angular, a uh, little flat top. Um, We'll see if we can pick it up first. Flavor profile? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Robust. Uh -huh. Robust. Crusty. Hints of croissant. Uh -huh. You say hints of croissant? Croissant. Oh, what's that? Uh, was that a Star Wars reference right there? <laughs> I, he I heard that too, actually. I what? think we all need sleep. What were you saying? Yeah, I'm like. It's like one of the planets or something. Ah. Uh -huh. no. Okay. Like Negative. That. All right, we tried. No rocks here. 
biology. <laughs> <laughs> Consolation prize. <laughs> All right. The sea mount defeated us, and then Rock's gonna, uh, Rob's gonna gain from our defeat. I guess. <laughs> you just call him Rock. Rock. <laughs> Rock. <laughs> Rob Rock. Uh, well, let me Rock get Rock. this zoom for Rock you. Rock. Yeah, it's uh, it's right here. Okay, I'm gonna have to pick up for that. But we have more rocks than any other watch combined. Wow. Yeah. So, take that. <laughs> I've accomplished my goal. Yeah. There's some long, fun yeah, well, stuff. We did a good job with sampling. We we. Uh, Um, I have a request here. from Jonathan Ashore to leave Triclops on until recovery, uh, okay. if we can, because they're downloading data. I will so. pass that on. All right. Oh, sponge stock. Uh, go for Zoom. Uh, I don't know what that is. The little like tiny a, coral? Yeah, it's a bamboo coral, branched. Mm -hmm. Uh, looking at the white any, coral. Any more zoom, or is that it? Yeah, oh, no, yeah. we got more. We got more. Okay, yeah, it's a bamboo. I'll I'll, I'll pass on it this time, but um, I thought it was something else. Still, good. Um, Would I you think zoom out? There was something underneath the rock that looked interesting. I don't know if it was oh, just like right there on the, the left. Um, oh, is it part of a sponge that's been manganese? Oh. This part? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Right. Looks okay. rocky. Go away. Yeah, I think um, we're okay here to move on, or okay. or we can keep poking rocks. Well, the ship is we're stable, stopped. so we'll keep it what like that, that for watch change, Does and that I can look too just fresh? sort of look around. Or too. It looks uh, quite large. Yeah. Yeah. So for our viewers online, yeah. we are going to be Too doing big. a uh, so big. watch nice change hit. here in just a few minutes. We have 10 minutes left with this crew. We are the 4 to 8 crew, and then soon is going to be the 8 to 12 crew. So if you have any last minute questions that you'd like to get answered from this crew, this is the time to go ahead and submit those questions. You can do that on the chat box underneath the video feed. Yep. Oh, that's, right. that's where we just were. I think. Oh, yeah. okay. Again, my name is... <laughs> they look good from a distance. My name is Brittany. I'm one of the uh, science communication fellows on board. We also have so Nick. <laughs> He's our geologist for this watch. We have Steve. You can just call him Science Steve. <laughs> Delta Dan. <laughs> Delta Dan. Yeah, we have a lot of alliteration on going on here. That's amazing. On the That's a good name. <laughs> Delta Dan. Yeah. <laughs> Delta Dan as a uh, I, I forget when he named it, when we got it. It was the uh, it must have been at least 2020 or 2021 Go when he, when he acquired that name. Is that little macaroni? Oh, it's, yeah. Uh, oh, that one. <laughs> it's definitely breakfast too. <laughs> Is that bacon? A glass sponge. That's um, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Likely a furid also. Go away. So some Hello. questions. Some yeah. questions are coming in. Uh, what is the scientific value of grabbing rocks from this spot? This specific spot? One more time. Um, so any particular spot um, isn't going to define uh, what we're looking for. We're, 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 we're trying to find the ideal rocks, and that's going to be possibly spread out around different locations of the seamount. Um, so, so it's more or less trying to find the, 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 the right rocks that we can use to, to, to date the seamount and, and 
understand its chemistry and uh, an origin. Okay, video, a you can better. go for Zoom. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Okay, stop there. Oh, is this the sponge that has? No. Okay. There was a sponge we saw a lot in the Cayman and Palmyra area that had hey. a lot of associates. Thanks. Oh yeah. In the pores of the sponge, it was incredible. Yeah. It's just I only see one business associate. <laughs> <laughs> this is always what that will make me think of. Law firm sponge and associates. <laughs> <laughs> Representing squat lobster, squat lobster yeah. and <laughs> squat lobster. <laughs> representing the deep sea since. <laughs> since Sounds like one five three. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was a lovely move. Nicely done. Yeah, good zoom. Ooh, so I actually love this question that just came in. Yeah. What kind of qualifications do you have to have as a scientist on an expedition like this? Um, Go for Zoom. So I would, I would ask Steve that he's currently tied up doing other stuff right now. Um, but so speaking for myself, I am a science communication fellow, right? So I am on board to... Go ahead talk about what we're seeing in a way that hopefully makes sense to um, the you know general public. So we have the scientists on board who are doing really, really amazing research and collecting so much data and very, very, very knowledgeable. And um, so I'm learning from them and I'm trying to see how I can take the information I'm learning while on board the EV Nautilus and bring it back with me um, to my home institution, which is the California Science Center. And how can I get those around that area to get involved or get excited about ocean exploration? So um, I do happen to have a degree in marine biology, but that is absolutely not necessary in order to be uh, on board the EV Nautilus. In fact, the science communication fellow who's going to be taking over for me here in just a moment um, her name is Stephanie, and she is a science illustrator. Amazing, amazing, amazing work. Um, and I'm sure she'll tell you some more about that during her watch. But we have a wide variety of different people aboard the EV Nautilus. It's not only just strictly uh, top-notch, you know, just science people. We have a very, very uh, diverse group aboard this ship, and I think that's, that's what makes it really, really unique and I'm super excited to be here. Um, so like I said, we are about to switch and have the eight to 12 crew come on. So I'm gonna be signing off here and so is the rest of my crew. I don't know if anybody else wants to say anything before we head on out, but this is the time to do so. Oh yeah, you, you killed that, Brittany. Oh, good job. Killed it, thank you. <laughs> All right, well, otherwise, we will be seeing everyone else online um, in a different dive. All right, signing off. Thank you, everybody. See you this afternoon.
morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So, morning. shall we start moving up slope to the first step here? Let proceed to yeah. proceed. Yes, so before we continue, can I just reset my DVL? Uh, yes. to go. Thank you. Okay, we can start ship move. I'm sure you know where we're going more than I do. Yeah. All right. <coughs> Annabelle, can I please get front porch cam? Sure, sure. Front porch cam. Thank you. Secure. And are we due for a gauge check? Uh, let me check. Uh, we had one at 7.35. Okay, you can wait a bit. Okay. Or whatever. Say two eight three. All right. So science, what are we looking for? Rocks, biology, exploration? It's I think we're more exploration right now. We have a lot of rocks. Uh, in biology as we see it, you know, let's uh, get some good zooms. Kay. And uh, the only other thing I'm looking for is if we get near the top. Uh, I'm looking for some carbonate rocks if they're there. I'll try to get a sample of it. So I'm not sure how many boxes or how much space we have left. Neither am I. How do we know? Will they also be covered in uh, manganese? Uh, they may be a little, but they usually have a, a different look, a different color. Okay. Pro probably be a little lighter. You might be able to see some uh, reef critters in there, some old skeleton. They're usually generally lighter in color. And with that being said, everyone, welcome to the 8 to 12 watch. Uh, we've been at this unnamed seamount at the north region of Johnson Atoll for a few hours now, and we're just exploring and looking for biodiversity and rock formations to tell us a little bit more about this area. Yeah, that does need more weight on it. That tether. Not heavy enough. Yeah, like, look at that. Terrible. I'm pulling up the delta. Mm -hmm. Sure. Delta will be around 20. Yeah, I think we only have about three more hours of bottom time on this dive, so... Oh, darn. <laughs> uh, do we want to do some quick introductions? Could you give me a uh, gauge view, please? I'm, if you want. Yeah, let's... All right, gauge view on bubble. Yeah, uh, um, so I'm Wait, Stephanie, the science communication fellow here on board. Um, I'm Thank a natural porch. science and children's illustrator. I'm Rob McCullany. I'm the watch lead for 8 to 12, also the lead geology scientist. I'm Paula Rodriguez. I am a biologist, and I'm part of the science team. I'm Maronke Harris. I'm in the data logger seat. I am the science manager in training. And I'm also a PhD student in oceanography. Hi, everyone. I am Elias. I am a navigator on board, TV Nautilus, and I'm a graduate student at the University of New Hampshire, majoring in ocean engineering, ocean mapping. Trevor Herc, Canadian. Oh. <laughs> um, Annabelle at Atlanta, um, undergraduate at Oregon State University. 
Dave Robertson, uh, lead video uh, for this cruise. Uh, and on whatever watch this is, because I've been on all of them tonight. Uh, so a little short on sleep, but we're making it through. And uh, I'm zooming in on things. Zoom in. Yeah, we're starting to come up this steep slope to the uh, top of the Gio. I think there's probably about uh, 400 more meters to go till we get to the top. Or 500 maybe. And it looks like we're at a, a bit of a, a, a scree slope of broken pillows, but also looks like there's some pillows in place, some uh, lava tubes as well. and lots of manganese and crustaceans. Crustace crustacean station. Yeah. Not to be confused with the crab crustacean or the squat lobster crustacean. A great question in the chat is um, what kind of preparation and training do new crew members take before operating everything? And I think that's a good question for uh, our ROV pilots. What type of training did you guys do um, when you were new or for the new people? Oh, is that a me? Sure. Yeah. Oh, OK. Um, so when we headed out from port, we had like a few days of transit time. That was when I did most of my training. Uh, before that, I was provided sort of a manual on how the GUI works for the ROVs, and I read a little bit about them, but we mostly went through training on, like, what are the different parts of the ROV, and what do they do, and how to make sure that it's not broken. <laughs> um, and, and then we talked through uh, and sat in the van and talked through how... Uh, we'll do dives and sort of what my responsibilities for this dive would be. Is that, is that all right? Did I miss anything? Okay. Can we zoom in on this spongy boy? Annabelle, how did you make it to Nautilus? How did you get into the uh, internship? Go ahead, zoom Dave. Um, well, I'm the ROV engineering intern. Yep. Um, Though I applied for multiple internships, and this is the one that I was put in. Because uh, I was, yeah, I was just like, I want to go to sea so bad. Um, is there everything you thought it would be and more? Yes. <laughs> All right, come on, thanks. I'm so, so happy that, I, that I'm like able to do this. It's very cool. Great, that's awesome. Science, what did we just see on that? What was it, a sponge? It was a crinoid, a feeder star associated with the sponge. Do you know what type was that, a upright or? No, uh, ophiroids are different um, group from feeder star. That are crinoids. No, no, I'm talking about the sponge, the ferrate. No. Ah, the ferrate. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes I'm. I don't want to say their name because I'm afraid to say it wrong. Well, uh, difficult. <laughs> um, I don't know. Do. Does, or is it like a, a symbiotic relationship? Do they just live together happily, or is the star...? Well, sometimes they are uh, generalist, so we don't know. We have to study carefully these, because Could you, you can find please? some species in several, even in several species. Ooh.
the spot. Another. Sally there. Cool. Well, thank you, Dave. Just a shout out to Dave. This is a really hard bottom type to properly expose for because it's so bright. So, nice job. Your work does not go unnoticed. Thank you. <laughs> Those things are particularly hard to focus on as well. Yeah, look at all the brittle stones on this. Oh, wow. Yeah. And every once in a while you'll see one jump to. Can we zoom free. in the base, please? Now I'm going to follow it up. I'm going to try to follow it up. Crinoid. Is the Another stalk crinoid. thing alive or is it it's, dead? It's dead. Do the brittle stars know that? I don't know. Uh, oh. oh! Oh, nice. Nice, nice scan it. there, Trevor. Perfect. That was great, man. You don't need me anymore. <laughs> no. Oh, there he is! Run Goodbye. away! <laughs> What's that yellow doodger? Uh, this is an, an anemone. Okay, wild. That's a great shot. Yes. Was this a beautiful a, a sponge or was oh, it? There's more too on the backside. Are those the cup corals you're talking about? Ah. Uh, cool. Thank you, Dave. Dave, do you mind if I turn off uh, one or two of the lights on Atlanta? Uh, no, I don't mind at all. Let's Thank you. That. Oh, so dramatic. Zoom in on that down here. Too fast. Too oh, fast. I can, I can do it. Yeah, let's share that amongst your colleagues as well. That sometimes less is more. Uh, go for some zoom, please. You kind of need them on for the gauges, but. Understood. Ooh. That's the what same texture as the background. Wow, that's hard to see. Is this a golden coral? Oh, golden coral. Hmm. With a Interesting. associate on it? Yeah. Amazing how many wraps those little brittle stars can do. With They're their legs. hanging on for dear life. All right, thank you. There's another one there. I'm gonna jet for a minute here. Yep. So can biology tell me, um, when we were on our dive last night, there was definitely less corals and sponges and things hanging onto plant or rocks. Um, is, what's the reason that they uh, get more abundant as we move up the, the <coughs> guillot? That's, that's a good question. Yeah, maybe there, I there are more, um, Marine snow and other resources there up there. There's a lot more rock to hold on to. to your more table. rocks. Is there more like nutrients and oxygen and stuff up Ooh, what's this? as we move up? Yeah, that depends on the geomorphology oh. of the Push. of the sea mount. You can zoom as you see fit, Dave. I think the cinema cam's got a great view of it. Oop. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Backwards, forwards. What is this? Hey, let's do the cinema cam. Ah. Uh, speaking of the cinema cam, we have questions in the chat asking about the new camera system on the porch. Um, does someone want to explain that a little bit? It's a test rig right now. It's still in its prototype phases. This will not be replacing the Zeus Plus, the main camera at all. This is an auxiliary additional thing that will bounce between various vehicles as the situations require them. So right now in prototype phase, just trying to work out all the bugs and hopefully we'll see it more often. And you can see that camera feed on satellite feed three if you're watching at home. Is there a, a lag to that camera, or is it in the same time as us? 
Good question. There's a there's a bit of a lag. Uh, it has to uh, go over the network, which is relatively fast, but then it's decoded in software, uh, and that uh, and then, dis then displayed in a player on a PC that's then converted to video, so we can see it. So. It's less latency than our tooling cameras. True. Oh, okay. That's pretty good. They're compressed more though. Can you please zoom in? Oh, this is beautiful. It has zoanthids, parasites. That's all the little small ones are? The small polyps are kind of zoanthids that are parasites of the sponge. Oops. So they're they're hurting the sponge since they're hurting? Well, they are or? symbiotic, okay. uh, but... Nice. Hmm. There are a lot of them, too. Parasite City. Cool. Somehow this happens to also be in the view of the cinema cam, which is pretty. Yeah, it convenient. looks really cool in the cinema cam. I think the cinema cam is recording internally. Nice. Oh, that's nice. a great look. Cool. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Once again, it's a test. So. There's actually three cameras. You can see them on the front porch there. Do they work independently or are they all working they're, together? They're all three independently. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and the, uh, the two outside ones are a uh, slightly different camera, much wider lenses. Uh, we don't have access to those pictures. Uh, and they're set up uh, as a stereo pair. So if they're positioned right, I'm not sure if they're positioned as a stereo pair right now. Uh, but if you set them up as a stereo pair, then you can uh, create a 3D uh, effect with the right software. Cool. A number of dead sponge stalks here. All right, these sponges. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Got about five of us. <laughs> and just to give a reminder to all you folks at home, if you're on nautiluslive.org watching, you can submit questions into our chat. Ooh. Hello, friend. <laughs> you sound like Megan. <laughs> <laughs> Work together long enough, we all start talking the same. <laughs> exactly. You can zoom in on this uh, ground-eating friend. You see that little nibble? Chomping down on sand. All it's these like critters eating sand. I don't know, man. It sounds pretty tasty. My dog eats sand. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. Okay. Who's flying this thing? Well, I guess there's not much down oh, there to eat. Oh, a big mouth thing. gulp. Yeah. Sorry, Dave, hanging out to dry with flying by the trying to have both cams. Ooh. Oh. Oh, he's fighting you. Think it's mad? Oh, really ferocious. No. It's just so irritated, scary. that's for sure. All right, buddy, I'll leave you alone. <laughs> <laughs> Do the lights on the on Herc uh, hurt or uh, disturb the wildlife at all? Um. Uh, for crustacean, I don't think so. I don't know about other animals. This might be the only light they see in their lives. Possibly, for some of them. Most of them can't see very well, right? Anyway, so... Yeah, but there are two strategies. Um, they can have reduced uh, skills to see, or they can do the opposite. And Someone asked, is there a way to measure the size of any findings? And we can get that question out of the way now. See those two dots in the middle of the screen? Um, 
Those are lasers that we use to measure things. It's 10 centimeters apart. Looks like fewer uh, corals on a steep slope here. Yeah. I'm gonna come off bottom a little bit here and just do a little quick look around. Great. See what we can see. Just, I don't know. Five to eight meters up. Let's do a quick check. Go ahead, boy. Call it out. Just as I leave, you see something, eh? Yeah, I know. You know what's gonna happen. We wait for you to do that, you know. Yeah. Ooh, there's oh, there's a Ooh, nice see? one over there. Something see? Big. That's what we call a professional. <laughs> Professional sponge. I was going to say, is Trevor the professional or is the sponge the professional? I think, I think it's Trevor. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> what would sponge be a professional in? Sponging. Oh. <laughs> Were you hoping for a better answer? <laughs> <laughs> Not really. <laughs> question for biology, how many types of sponges are there in the deep sea? Uh, so we don't really know because <laughs> most of them are un undiscovered, but uh, it's a very diverse group for sure and I'm sure that uh, there are like thousands of species. I remember one time, I can zoom in on that, yep. one time we were uh, out here and somebody asked how many deep sea corals there are. You can go ahead and zoom, Dave. And the SCF at the time put it into Google, how many deep water corals exist? And the Google answered, at least three. <laughs> at least three. <laughs> at least. <laughs> Let me put the sponge question in Google. Oh, this is another interesting relationship with, between zoanthids and corals. Is that a bubblegum with zoanthids? Yeah. Bubblegum with zoanthids. Little stars. This coral's so vibrant compared to the other ones yeah. we've seen. Yeah. Kind of in the rocks here. I gotta go. Or is it? Uh, We're at a go. 0.7 wraps. Yeah. Is that right. okay? When That's you a nice bring rock. your heading over to port, it'll fix it. Okie doke. Yeah, there's another. Yeah. Nice purple one there. Nice yep. purple. Is that a Ritagorgia? Is that the fireworks one? I don't know. Uh oh. Dangerous situation when. Uh, Never this, mind. This is a steep scarf here. <laughs> uh, the internet says there's uh, 8,000 species recognized and over 25,000 estimated to exist. Hmm. Sounds like they've improved the search algorithm since I last. And that was the. Um, that. The title of the, the, the webpage is The Mediterranean Sea, so I don't know if that's like just in the Mediterranean or everywhere, because that's, that's a lot of sponges. Does anybody know what those, like, sort of stick things that we were seeing on the bottom? Dead things. This one? I don't... Yeah, stuff like that. Rob, what is this? Yeah, I think it's, uh... It dead sponges? A spud stock from a dead one. Yeah. Oh, wow. Sounds right to me. Let's have a look. And if it's there long enough, it'll get covered in rock, too. Can we have a zoom, please? Yeah, you can see the texture. Mm. Sorry, a little bouncy there. Spongy. Someone in the chat just asked about them, too. Are they, um, so they're coral, they're stalks, so they're Corals or sponges? Sponge, a little sponge swirly stocks. coral. A little swirly coral. Okay, thank you, Dave. It's funny when you zoom in on mostly anywhere, you find a lot of stuff you didn't see otherwise. There's another one there. Currently, we're at a depth of 17 or 1,788 meters. We got a rock question. Were these rocks formed by pillow lava? 
would they be mafic or felsic? Uh, they're more of an alkalic. So they're not, not felsic and they're not, they'd be mafic, not ultra mafic, and they're probably alkalic. What does that mean? That means oh, they're good, from a hot you. spot as opposed to from a <laughs> mid ocean ridge. Good morning. <laughs> There's a nice, nice one right here, too. So. I'm a little bit stretched out at the end of my leash, okay. so that's fine. We can look. Just have to be patient. Golden Carl. That has a spirally one. Yeah, yeah okay, Dave, you can zoom. That's beautiful. I love those. Yes. Yeah, they're great. It has some oh. shrimp. Oh, shrimp count. <laughs> what type of coral is this? Uh, it is a gorgia. Hmm. It looks like an umbrella. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, they call it fireworks coral, too. Looks like an old phone cord. Yeah. Yeah. Purple base there. Purple? Yeah. Well, what's a phone cord? <laughs> <laughs> That's a different animal. <laughs> Come wide, please. I'm going to try to get no, cozy up in there, that purple one. Is that another shrimp? I think there was two that we've just seen in this shot. There was one, like, off to the... Uh, Directions. Okay, go in again, right. please. Maybe a little more stable. What's this purple thing? Oh, yeah, what is that? Is that a tiny right Eritagorgia? Uh, I don't know. It's probably mm -hmm. like a Karen that the shrimps are putting for direction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a little shrimp sign. Yeah. Bus stop. Cool shadows yeah, right now. That's, that's really, yeah. cool. really weird and disorienting. <laughs> Passing cloud. Yeah. All right. Thank you. That was great. Thanks, Trevor. Thank you. Why, why do Dave. the stalks spiral like that? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe the um, kitin on the skeleton grows like that. <clears throat> One of many mysteries. Yeah. Do you think it gives it a little more flexibility or stability or something like that to do that? I guess so, because um, when the coral is hard, is um, calcium carbonate, it's difficult to squeeze. And Are these corals calcium carbonate? This one, I, uh, nice. they have both protein, skeleton, and Calcium carbonate. Go ahead and zoom here, please, on the yellow one. Zoanthids? Is it another bubble yeah. zoanthids, or is that. Looks like. Or is that just a. Alright, come wide, please. I gotta not bash the cinema cam. <laughs> as nice as a cinema cam is, it's causing. So bubblegum corals aren't yeah, only great. Great ro rock outcrop over there. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, you got your sponge, the foray. <coughs> a couple of different types of corals. What that's are the nice. sponges called that look like the vertebrae, like the spinal cord? I think they're called foraid, F A R R E I D, something Parade. like that. We are yeah, really long. Another. Ooh. Ooh, is that a bamboo coral there? I can have a quick look. Yeah. Uh, go ahead for a quick zoom there, Dave. See if we can see any segments. Yeah, I don't uh. see any. No, I don't see any either. No. No. Okay, thank you. Come on. Thank you. So that means it's not yeah. a bamboo. You'll start to see some of these off to darkened segments. Like every six or eight inches long. 
10, 20 centimeters. Mm. Wind. So the spiral coral is Iridogordia. Uh, the other one, the coral yellow, was a uh, family of corals called Paramuriceidae. And this last one was collected a lot of times, but uh, it's still a species tending to be discovered and described. Uh, this donkey coral. When you do the blue circles, is that a request for Zoom? Yeah, I'm trying to not go over, All right. over. I mean, it's one of the things, you know, I'm pointing to it just to say it's there. If yeah, we can zoom in. Zoom, we can zoom. Feel I free to uh, say it, too, because I'm not always yeah. looking at the screen. Yeah. I mean, normally... I think there's... Oh, never mind. Are there yeah. nodes on it's that? The, it looks like bamboo, right? Yeah. Yeah, but that yeah. many of them. Oh, yeah. Okay, there's another. There's a couple nodes there. Yep. I don't know. All right, come wide, please. I'm it's just that Paula is just talking all the time, so I don't want to overspeak her. Something you have to know about Rob, he's very shy, <laughs> and tiring, and you have to draw him out. So that stick over there is a spongy? Yeah, probably a dead, sp dead sponge stalk. Oh. Just above the lasers now? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah there was one oh. off to the left, too, but that's, you don't need to zoom on it, just pointing it out. And they'll eventually mm -hmm. break down, right? And dissolve or something. I bet that would be a pretty slow process. Yeah. How long do sponges live? Um, this is a very hard question because I don't know. <laughs> They can live uh, to 200 years. Yeah, you can zoom on that coral or whatever. Yeah, that is triple circle. That must be high priority. <laughs> no, it's just that Steve lost the uh, stylus. Oh, Aww. did he? Yeah. Come on, Steve. <laughs> I'm calling him out. You can zoom on the yellow thing, please. Very far away. It's amazing how many little, littler things that you don't see until you zoom in. Yep. It is amazing, yeah. Nice. Thank you. All right, I'm wide. Gorgia up here to zoom. I w wish I could remember the name of the purple one. It's like a paragorgia, but not. I yeah, think. Steve said that last yellow one was a Storopathies. Is that a shrimp? Yeah, maybe yeah, that one. That's the same one, too. <coughs> Ooh, what's that? Is that a fish? Fish. Fish, fish, fish. yeah. We can zoom oh, in the fish. fish. Seal, sea frog, tadpole. <laughs> can we get an ID on it? Give it your cusk. I'm going to try down light. That's not... Uh, it's slightly better, I guess. Is there... Um, 
Anything known about the Cuskill breeding? All right, thank you, Dave. Cycles? Because we see a lot of little ones. I don't know about them. Oh. No. No. Yeah, this purple one. Uh, are you? The purple. Can Some you zoom in? Yeah, please zoom in. What are you? Oh, sorry, I'm bouncy this time. Well, I, I remember those. Steve jumps in. Victor Gorgia. Uh, yeah. Victor Gorgia. Someone, Victor in, the Gorgia. Yeah. Someone yeah. in the chat said Victor Gorgia. All right. Thank you. Beautiful. What? I like those. Yeah. Victor Gorgia. There's another one there, too. Yeah. I think that was a really, really short purple thing we saw earlier. Yep. I had the name wrong earlier. Another sponge. Get rid of Gorgia. Store up happies, maybe. What is it about Can you zoom in? Where are we looking? Coral. There we go, yeah. Go ahead and zoom, please. Yeah, I think that's the store pathies again. Okay. Oh, and a little, what, uh, what is this? Little critter. Is that an amphipod? No, it looks like a scale worm, right? It's so small. All right, thank you. Thank you. Steve's calling that a paramusia. <laughs> and a polychaete with the little thing. All right, we can do a gauge check now. All right, uh, adjusting delta. Yeah. some interesting rock formations, Ooh. almost like uh, vents coming out the side of the volcano. Ooh, there's a nice one up here. Delta's at 20, gauge oh, check. Cool. Let's go for a zoom here, please. Yeah, zoom here, Is this a nice sea pen? Oh, uh, sea pen, yeah. And there's a shrimp just out of frame on the top left. Add it to the count. Cool, sea pen. Up to the right, there's something too. Oh, I can, you can stay zoomed in, Dave. I'm to feel on. I can get there. As Steven says. Yeah. This white thing? Yeah. So there's... Yeah, there it is. Oh, oh a nice wow. crinoid. I love crinoids. They're such a great combination of beautiful and creepy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is it attached to that? All right. Yeah, it's... Um, Hanging with the posterior part of the body. Thank you, Dave. Uh, gauge can. Go for it. There's a lot of stuff happening there. That's great. It's beautiful, this. Yeah. What is this? It's got a little crack in Adjusting it. Adjusting delta. Are those things that uh, just cracks? Ooh. Cannot get a visual on uh, gauge can. No, you need to hire us up. Oh. So we are exploring an unnamed geot, which means it's never been explored. Um, people are asking again about why it's unnamed and who goes to name it. About a new species? Uh, the the sea mount. Ah, uh, the sea mount. Well, I mean, there's probably over 10,000 of these, probably just in the Pacific. And uh, in this region, it just has a lot of uh, geos and seamounts. And How do you spell uh, geot? G U I O T S. In the plural. Interestingly, it was named after a, a building at Princeton. What? It was flat top. It was named after, and the building was named after a, a scientist. He has a, a checkered past. 
<laughs> and the Bubble the craft? Sure. The, uh... But, I mean, for, for the naming convention, you usually have to go through GEMCO, which is like a, an international naming rights. But oftentimes, if you name something in a publication and give it a name, that can often stick as well. But, you, can, you know, try to be as respectful to, like, a marine protected area like this or in a monument area. Nautilus in the OAT has never named anything, have we? Yeah. Oh. What about common names? There was actually a, a something, I don't know, I should know this. There's a something that was recently named after a longtime uh, chief scientist that worked with OET for years. Cool. Porch. Sorry about the Zeus. What are you going to do? Bob, Bob Ballard got a ship named after him, which they, the Navy usually only does when you passed away. So he was checking his pulse, just to make sure. <laughs> There's a research vessel, shrimp. appropriately. Shrimp. Two shrimp. Two shrimp. This should be the guillot shrimp. So can we go back to the, there was a building named guillot? Yeah. And then the seamount style type whatever was named after a building? Yeah. The shape of the building. Has anyone ever thought about coming up with a better idea? <laughs> well, once you start it, because sometimes it sticks. Yeah, right. We can call them flat top seamounts. Hmm. Like, a mountain's called a mountain, and a guillot is like a plateau, right? Yeah, like a, yeah, um, um, you know, a butte almost. A butte? On land. A B U T T E. C butte? C butte. C butte. I'm just picturing um, in Oregon, southern Oregon, there's something called table rocks, which are just, you know, big mountains with very flat tops. Yeah. So I'm picturing that's what they look like, but underwater. I think we should uh, assume this. Crinoid. Sounds good. Let's do it. Go for it, Dave. There's another Sipen Antoftilun. Yep. Nice one. Alright, I'm moving on. Moving Let's on with my life. Let's ask a fun question. If you were a creature living down there, what creature would you be? Sponge. A sponge? <laughs> I would be a shark. A shark? I'd be a shrimp. Ruthless killer, oh, eh? The brittle star leaving. Leaving the I'm colony. Bye bye. <laughs> look at this big thing coming up into view here. Whoa. Oh. Whoa. Nice. Wow. Wow. That's yeah, huge. Yeah, let's zoom in on this thing. Is this. I don't know if we need to zoom in, we can just get yeah, closer. All sorts of associates and. The sea star. Yes. Oh, yeah. Gonya Sterit. And maybe there'll be a squat lobster on it? Yeah. Are these a bunch of associates down here? Some uh, barnacles, maybe? Okay, we could have some zoomage. We got a crinoid yep. on the left, too. Black crinoid? Yeah, right there. Oh, yeah, some barnacles. Uh, yeah. Barnacles? Yeah, they are barnacles. Yeah, do whatever you'd like with the zoom, Dave. Whatever you think yeah, looks like best. It's been predated quite a bit. So if we can see that sea star up there. Yeah, I'm working my way. Does the fact that this uh, coral's so big mean it's older than some of the other ones? Yes. Totally. I see these is knobs. Is this a bamboo coral? Yeah, you can see the, the, the little knobs down. Yeah. Well, it's not so colorful compared to the other ones we've been seeing. I think it's, it's half dead, probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's like the, missing. The sea star is eating it. Tasty. Slurping up polyps off the thing. It's giving a little wave. Hey, buddy. Apex predator. Another crino to finish it off. 
Lovely. <laughs> Thank you. That's great. No Thank squat you. lobster. Thank you. No. They prefer life colonies. <laughs> That's sad that that one's so far gone because it was huge. They made a nice snack for a Easter. More like a meal. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, see, okay. Steve said that the uh, skeleton of that last one was starting to dissolve too. Lots more in the distance there. Yeah. Yeah, big ones. More of these, uh, I've already forgotten the names, bunches. Parade? Yeah. That one. The Dead one down below, is a stalk. Is Farrea or Spidoculia? All right, gauge check complete. All right, I gotta get going here. Oh, Coming in hot. Yeah. Wow. That's gorgeous. What's the benefit of the bright colors on the corals compared to most of the other ones that are like white? I don't know, maybe it's more related with the metabolites. Mm. Okay. Are these all the bamboo corals, these yellow ones, you think? The yellow corals we're seeing, are they all bamboos? They have a similar habit to what the one we saw that was close up. Mm -hmm. The split in that rock is kind of cool looking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or that boulder. Um, can we zoom the yellow, the yellow one? Any one of the yellow ones? Yeah. This one. This one? Yeah, sure. It's going to be a little bouncy, but I'll do what I can. Let's just see if we see the, the bamboo. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay, Dave, go ahead. Ooh. Yeah, it's the sun. It's yeah, it's called the yellow bamboos. The yellow bamboos. Is that a... Um, you call them crinoids on Yeah, they're crinoid it? off the left. Yeah. Oh, I'm getting good at this. Are those polyps or the zoanthids? I think it's zoanthids. Yeah. Yes. Incredible. Yeah, it's completely, That's a lot of them. completely colonized. Not very healthy, this bamboo. No. <laughs> it's not? No, those are all zoanthids that live on it. What so is that? They're not the original polyps. Oh. So all the original polyps are probably gone and replaced by the zoanthids, which are associates. Oh. So would that mean that the coral itself is dead, or? Yeah. Hmm. Do they eat the coral, or do they just use it? I'm not sure. I think they use uh, the coral as a substrate to grow mm, right okay. and they colonized the whole colony and then they cannot eat because of the the epibiontic right they probably have a business partnership with the uh, sea stars yeah <laughs> they'll, they'll clear the area first and then they can grow on it nice <laughs> so real estate developers exactly then. right <laughs> Wait. Why don't they just grow their own stocks? Hmm? The the uh, I I don't know. Maybe they prefer to grow yeah. there because they're current and it's easier to squat. Easy. Yeah. Can they can they detach and leave? Oh, this is yeah. This is a gorgeous <laughs> piece of flow. Yeah, this rock is lovely. Yeah. Yeah. I want to take a step back here and. Yeah, it almost looks like it's a, a later stage eruption that kind of came over the top of it. But oh. look how that promontory. Wow. Yeah, wow. And life all over it. We're getting a lot more life abundance up here, aren't we? Yeah, there's probably no way you're going to get a sample of this. It's all looks like it's really in place. Just take the whole mountain. We're going to need a bigger herc. <laughs> <laughs> you are coming in hot on this seamount. Look at this thing. It's prime coral real estate up here. Absolutely. They love the view. Look at 
the diversity of these too. Sponges. I think it's cool seeing all the dead ones. Like, it looks like a forest floor, like full of sticks and woody debris. Yeah, it does. But it's just sponges, or dead sponges. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let me get a little closer first. Okay, Dave, go ahead. Ooh. Whoops. Sanuroptychus. Is that a, a um, squat, lobster. squat lobster? Yeah. Er uh, oh, sorry, I'm at the end of my leash. Uh, it's a crystal gorget. Okay. It's a little different. I can uh, adjust the delta. It's a little bit high right now. Yeah. By the time I, by the time you do, I'll be gone. Okay. It's so cool being on that first watch when it was mostly sediment. We saw all those like sea urchins and stuff. And, um, and acorn now, worms. And the acorn worms. Yeah. And now we're seeing a lot of corals and sponges and stuff. Can we very can we little sediment. Yeah. Yes, we can. Are all those like uh, sort of round spots on the rocks like places where coral used to be? Hold, hold, fast. Yeah, maybe? correct. Yeah, hold. Yeah. Trevor's right. All right, zoom in, please. This this area. Um, the other side, if possible, if it's possible. Lobster. Come wide, please. Other side of what? Here, but in... Oh, I see. The little, little red thing. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Zoom in there, please. You can see that down there, too. Or do you want the back side of that? Yeah. Taller? Yeah, there's a squat lobster. Just if you come to the right there, Trevor. Coming right. You just see a squat lobster. Oh, light. I see what you're after. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I... <laughs> My bad. It's S raising its silly hand. You. I'm here. Peace. It's a long little <laughs> arm. I love the little like prongs on the end of there. The little oh, claws. The long arm of the law. Yeah. Stir. And Trevor, if you come after you're done here, you come left as a an enemy of some sort, I think. All right, come out a little bit, Dave, please. Okay, so this is um, a species of Munidopsis. Uh, the species is Munidopsis gochuani. Yeah, right there. You can see down here. Okay, yeah. I can be fast, but like, we can do it. Go ahead, zoom, Dave, quick. Ooh. I think the two vessels are, the two RVs are getting closer yeah, together. I, I gotta move soon. Okay, that's fine. All right, come on, please. Make note of it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Let's go. I remember reading somewhere that, um, like, regular lobsters have tails that, you know, stay out, and then crabs have, like, their tails kind of got fused underneath them, and squat lobsters can, like, kind of move between yes. extended tails yeah, and, they, like, curl They tails. have the tail fan uh, bended against the cephalothorax, and they can, they can move, they can swim like lobsters, like, like yeah. the crayfish. Can, can, um, like, food lobsters tuck their tails in like that? Uh, yes. That's why those uh, squat lobsters are called lobsters. squat lobsters, okay. but this is a completely convergence. Yep. They are not related. What they is this hole? Different Look at this little pit. That's really neat. A little hiding hole. That hole right there. It's so cool. Shrimp. Shrimp. 
shrimp count? What's our shrimp count? Um, well, total or this this current watch? I'm gonna stay here for just a Ooh, sec, I'm Elias, not sure. Which one and you think? Uh, after you get a couple hits, can I have a reset? We just passed please? 15 oh, okay. on the whiteboard. Wow. Well, on, on my sheet from last watch and this watch, um, 22. That's a lot of shrimp. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. there's a All huge right, rainbow you. outside. We're missing it. Yeah, I was expecting to see it here where the vehicle was. Yeah, so the yellow sticks to the DVL trail and the blue ones are the USBL hits. Oh, okay. And the reset brings them back together. Oh, I see. Thanks. Yeah. You can see the rainbow in the, the back cam of the boat. Oh yeah, nice. It's beautiful. This ridge just keeps going yeah. along. It's quite nice. How far are we from the top of the guillot? We are about um, 264 meters away. Let me see. Let me see. Yeah. Do you Wait. copy that, Stephanie? Yeah, yeah. About three kilometers away? No, <laughs> 264 meters. 264 meters. Oh, 264. Yeah. Okay. So the, what, what's the depth of the top of the geode? It's like 1,400 something? It's about 1,500. 15, 1519 meters. Okay. So we have about two hours left. So how long do you think it'll take at this rate to get up there to the waypoint, Elias? Okay, I'm coming. That, that is a spectacular flow that came out of there. Yeah, really cool. Where's my mouse? Rob, could you explain um, what some theories are as to why the guillotes have flat tops? If you've lost your mouse, you can sometimes change which uh, your KVM, change it to a different computer yeah, and then change it back and it'll come back. A oh, okay. couple of ideas. I don't know. <laughs> At the higher latitudes, the sea mounts that they're erupted can be come above sea level. And over time, the wave action can erode them and make them flat. And over time, the seafloor sinks as it gets older. So can it can we actually zoom here? Can be yes. Is it if it's a lower latitude, a similar process of a seamount goes above sea level. Go ahead, Dave. But instead it gets surrounded by reef forming. So you get a uh, coral reef around it. And yeah, it same sinks. species. It becomes a uh, an atoll. And then ultimately uh, a flat top seamount geo as Thank it sinks you. below. You're welcome. When the reef can keep up uh, building the reef. Mm -hmm. Those are the two general ideas. So it's possible this mountain was once an island? Yeah. But we don't know. Oh, look at that. Is that the... Victor, uh, Victor Gordia? Victor Gordia. I yeah. like those. Yeah, another one above it, too. Such yeah. a shocking color. There's so many shrimps. Shrimp. So waypoint six is the top of the guillot, is that right? Just Or almost the top, anyway? Yeah, so we're about uh, 240. Two four eight meters now away, yeah. and I think we should use about thirty forty minutes ish to, to get to the top. To get to the top. Yeah. Okay. So we have plenty of time. 
I mean, once you get near the top, you can always go laterally, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's all cloudy over here. Did we, like, touch the bottom or something? Uh, it's probably the other ROV. <laughs> 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 yeah, I might have bonked. Should we yeah, down? is that a Paragorgia? Let's see. Let's find out. Go ahead, Dave. Is that bubblegum? It looks bubblegummy to me. Hey, Rob, people can barely hear you. Can you, like, push your mic closer to your mouth? Thanks. This could be a Paramuriseid. Paragorgia. Yeah. Steve was wondering it might be good to sample some of these zoanthids that we see. Sample some zoanthids? If we, okay. Yeah, if we come across them again. Yeah. The zoanthids are the brittle stars on the corals, yeah? No, no the, the, typically the yellow, yellow thing we've been Thank looking you, at. Ooh. Yeah. They look like they're yellow corals, but they're yeah. not. Oh, and can they I gotta go now, detach actually. themselves and find a new stalk to attach to, or do, are they stuck there? The, the zoanthids? Yeah. Uh, I guess they are stuck there. Forever. <laughs> Forever. Forever and ever. Ooh. Ooh. What is that? Is that a sponge? Nice. Yeah. Sponge. sponge. Big sponge. Andre. Speaking of things that are hard to expose for with video. Professional sponge? That's a professional sponge. Wow. Nice colors. Good lighting. That one's got to be real good at sponging. I think so, yeah. I'm going to put that in the uh, highlight clip, professional sponge. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's good, yes. Yeah. You can see with lasers, the thing's nearly a meter in diameter. There's a shrimp diameter. in there. There's a shrimp yeah. in the sponge. All right, I'm gonna hit stuff. I gotta go. So, so if the shrimp is like cleaning that, do they use a sponge on the sponge, or do they? <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh no. <laughs> Are those sponges texture-wise similar to like the you know the sea sponges that? you can commonly find in like gift shops and stuff. These sponges are um, exact pinellids. Are there zoanthids on that? Sorry. Uh, I we have should time? move along. If I'm going to do a zoanthid yeah. sample. Okay, move. fine. Sorry. It's all good. No, what, what was the question again? So what's the texture of, of deep sea sponges? Is it similar to like the sponges that you know you'd find in an aquarium gift shop or something. I haven't never touched one deep sea oh. sponge, but um, I guess they are hard because of the skeleton. Mm -hmm. They uh, the shallow water sponges have uh, spicules, and this exactly the sponge have a reticulate skeleton. So I guess they are, they should be hard. Are these zoanthids? Can we yep. zoom in, please, Dave? Yeah, Steve said that giant sponge was a sacocalyx. Ah, sorry, at the end of my leash here. Sack of what? Sacocalyx. S a c c o c a l y x. Sacocalyx. Yeah, sac, sac of what? For those zoanthids? I don't know. I'm no, no, I'm talking no. to. Not zoanthids. No. Uh, sorry, I'm bouncy. No, this is another paragorgid. Yes, Panamorisea. Yep. Okay, never mind. You can come wide, please. And were those uh, brittle stars on it? Yep. They hang on so tightly. Near yes. the Yeah, near the top and all these pillow basalts here. No carbonate. Ooh, fish. Mm. Fish. Ooh. Fish. Squirrel. Squirrel. Um. <laughs> Bye. This looks very zoanthidy. Oh yeah. Uh, I think there are more zoanthids here. Yep. Yeah. 
So if you want, we could you know, try to sample that if you have time. You want to do a snip and slurp? Uh, what, what do you think is best? Am I slurp? Yeah, snip and slurp. Sure, let's okay. slurp it. Okay, can you tell me which jar I can use? I'm oh. on four. Is that right? It doesn't look like there's anything in there. Nope. Let me know, science row. Yeah, that, let's do that. Let's sip uh, slurp. Let me know which jar to use. We uh, have jars four, five, six, and seven open. Great. I got four lined up. Great. Bonk. 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 Can I have the craft arm on bubble, please? Uh, craft arm on bubble. There's a shrimp. Oops. That's not how you do that. Hit the right buttons. There we go. Where is that thing? Way up high? There it is. Can you turn on down light, please? Oh, uh, perk, perk lights? Perk lights, yeah. Hello, light bar. Hmm. Down light. Thank you. Ooh. Can I get a zoom, please, Dave? I'm really sure about the perspective here. Good there. Can I take, uh, can I take this part right here? Uh, yeah. Not the, not the bottom one, but the, yep. the, the upper one of those two. So, so you're talking about maybe that one? Yeah, the, exactly. Yeah, the one on me. Let me, uh, Whoop. Do I th have enough piece. reach? No, I did a bad job landing. So come wide, please, Dave. It's really high up. Bummer. Yeah, so it's just... Just a little off the top. Yeah, Roger.